Um, of all the numbers of Brian McKnight's, I like number two because it was the most straightforward. It was. Because one, you're like a dream country. Two, just want to be with you. Yeah. Three, I think it's pretty plain to say. <laughs> Are you fucking listening? <laughs> yeah, yeah. How many more goddamn numbers do I have to sing about <laughs> for you to understand? No, no, no. Let me finish. No, 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 no. Let me finish. <laughs> we go, dude. It's your, it's your stepdaughter's recital. How about Lou Bega? That guy had a lot of cooks in the no kitchen. No one in his life is saying, how about Lou Bega? I'd just like to remind you, you are the only guy alive who is saying, how about Lou Bega? <laughs> maybe, his, maybe his entertainment attorney in 97... Trying How about pitch, Lou Bega? Trying to pitch him for a cooking show. <laughs> They're like, it's like a, a Food Network uh, meeting. We're like, all right, who can host the uh, Top Chef? How about Lou Bega? Brian, you're fired. Anybody else? I need you. <laughs> I don't need you out of the room. I need you out the building <laughs> for that one. Leave your badge. This is the same guy who was pushing Lenny Kravitz on us last week. <laughs> I, um, Dude, I love dumb humor, man. My brother yeah. and I would do stuff where, like, we were watching Simon Birch one time. Do you know that movie? Oh, yeah. And, uh, and we're watching it, and there's a scene at the end. Spoiler alert, you only had 25 years to watch Simon <laughs> Birch. Uh, we, we're watching Wait, is it this where, like, like, a, um, like a, it's a kid with dwarfism, like, gets a kite or something? <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to say that I was the last person you interviewed. How about Lou Bega? <laughs> I don't know what his ailment was, but he had an ailment. My friend yeah. Brad Williams, who's a little Flies person. Flies a kite. He doesn't. <laughs> My, friend, no Brad, my friend Brad Williams, a little person. I know Brad. Okay, good. Yeah. Brad said that Simon Birch was like his, uh, his like Shawshank or something, or his. What do you say? It was like his, um, uh, I don't know, fucking heroic drama. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. His anthemic drama. Yeah. He could identify. Like yeah, it was like the one where they were like, all right, it's gonna be okay. I like the movie. <clears throat> Good what movie. happens in it though? But at the end, there's just this dumb God. This is gonna build to <laughs> so nothing. So there's no kite. No. <laughs> So, so at the end of the film, he's okay. like dying in the hospital bed, and oh, Joe, Ma shit. Joe Mazzello from uh, Love Jurassic Mazzello. Park is like, "Hey, you're not gonna die, Simon." Even though he knows he's gonna die, it's very emotional. But my brother, while we were watching it, my brother Matt, one time, he was like, "What if they just like bled in Lenny Kravitz cover of American Woman in the middle of the scene?" So funny, and like like little things like that. Yeah. That's the stuff that like. You love that. Kills me. It's like the what I if. To, I would hear stories about Harris Whittles. Did you know Harris? Yep. I didn't know him at all, but loved his work. And him and Aziz would have these jokes where, like, they had jokes that, like, Chris Pontius from Jackass had his own late night show. And it was like an inside joke, but then they'd go into pitch meetings with high powered executives in Hollywood. And they would just slip it in to make each other laugh where they'd go. So then the second act, the character kind of goes virally, gets famous. He's on like Conan. He's on Good Morning America, Pontius Tonight. And they just bleed through, they would bleed through it just to make each other laugh. And the, the executives are just like, yeah, Pontius Tonight. <laughs> and like, but that is the heart of great humor to me is it's not just about the content. Yeah. It's who do you get to share with it mm. where the reaction and the feeling is, is congruent. Because the congruency of shared comedy is, I, w I would say it's as intimate as sex. And I, I know because I've had both. Ooh, and not in that order. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, no! <laughs> is that very, a Lumix? Very funny. <laughs> <laughs> did, you just, did you just TBS me? Very funny. <laughs> Paul, you see Richard hey. Jewell? He knows drama. <laughs> TNT, TNT, this guy. <laughs> USA, kid, this character's welcome. Oh wow! I was just about to say, what NBC's was their slogan? NBC's peacocking me. I'm, I'm just. I There's can't peacocking stop. me. I'm, I can't stop. I was trying to name every. What was ABC? Oh, you're when you hear your family. No, no ABC what is ABC? Proud as a peacock, right? That's ABC. No, it's, NBC. Proud as a peacock. They said there's peacocking in me. I was like, there's no way that was NBC's. <laughs> ABC's was a. Uh, is Home Improvement still on? <laughs> <laughs> Do we still have Home Improvement? Fuck! I love that I show. Know. Um, Good show. Those all right. kids all turned into crack addicts, right? <laughs> How about I'm kidding. That's that's me trying to do a Norm McDonald thing. Hell oh, yeah, yeah. I used to love Home Improvement. Uh, my you know, my favorite thing about Home Improvement is uh, that all the kids turned out to be crack addicts. <laughs> you told me what it says. <laughs> I'm still laughing at how fun that was. Uh, hey, guys, Adam Ray here for the About Last Night podcast. Hope you enjoyed that little ALN highlight, that little freebie tidbit. If you want to see more highlights, clips, animations, and episodes, click right there. huh? Click right there and get all the free ALN goodies your heart can muster. And, of course, subscribe to the show by clicking the ALN logo right there. huh?
Do that. It's easy. I'll see you next time. Peace.